Hello Scorpio! Welcome to my channel, The Mother Speaks Tarot. My name is Allison. My channel is still pretty new, it's just over a year old, so if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you've already subscribed, or if you subscribe today, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for being here with me, subscribed or not. Alright, um, for those of you who are new and don't know, I'm also an author. I'm writing a, a series, it's an action-adventure love story called Perception, the two yet one, book one here, and I've read this book aloud live on Facebook and uploaded all those videos here to YouTube for you to enjoy for free. Just know that book two is already published and available. And all the links that you need for my books are in the description box below. Also, if you would like a personal reading, the information to contact me to schedule one is also in that description box. So welcome and welcome back everybody. Uh, as I usually do, I'll give uh, as quickly as I can a description about what I'm doing this week. I was feeling the earth talking to me. We're getting our messages from the earth this week and that's because she was saying, hey, uh, summer is almost over. Um, they are my seasons after all. How about you hear from me at least once a season? I was like, yes, of course. That's exactly why I got her tarot in the first place. Um, so I'm using the Nature Spirit Tarot by Jean Marie Herzl. I was looking for a specific tarot to speak. This is this tarot is reserved only for Mother Earth. I'm not going to use this tarot for any other spirit or for any normal week or whatever. When the when the Earth wants to talk, we're using this one. I looked and I looked and I I couldn't find one that had everything that I needed. This one does. Jean Marie Herzl, she illustrated and wrote it herself. She knows what she's talking about. She's got the symbolism. She's got the cards. The, the, the artistry is absolutely beautiful. The feel of it, even the back of the cards is just gorgeous. Okay, so um, I emailed Marie and I asked her, uh, Jean Marie, I asked her how she felt about me using her tarot on my channel for the, the earth to speak and she was delighted. And she's a delightful person. Her energy is beautiful and so um, this is the tarot I'm going to be using. If I need to clarify, I'm going to use the tarot of the cloisters, as usual, for, from uh, Marie, Marie, um, Michelle Leavitt. Also, I have a couple of other um, Mother Earth type oracles, but she wanted me to use this one. At the end of the reading, I'm going to pull some cards from the Gaia Oracle by to Tony Carmine Salerno. This is a pocket deck. It doesn't have a book, so I'm reading these intuitively, which is working fine, which is actually really good. And she also chose this next oracle. I'm going to pull one card uh, and read from the book from this next oracle. Um, we've seen this oracle on my channel just once because of, of its modern spiritual feel. Okay, so um, I got this uh, oracle. We read this oracle um, at the beginning of summer, right after I was done with all the, the Father's Day, Father's Month. Um, and it's the Union of the Heart and Mind Oracle deck by my friend April Mangino. Now, she is um, an astrologer. She is uh, a photographer and an artist. She is a very wise, sacred feminine uh, who's very balanced. And... Um, you know, so she is always outside. She is always communicating with our planet. And so when the, the planet told me this is the one she wanted, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, of course. Uh, April loves the planet. She's always out there outside. Um, but as I continued on this week, I, a lot of the messages going on were about uniting the heart and the mind exactly what April's doing here in her, her deck. If we can get our mind to listen to our heart, which is our intuition, which is our spirit, which is love, which is God goddess themselves, then our lives are better. The union of the heart and mind. This is one of the, um, the points our planet has been trying to make through our sister and her daughter, April. Okay, so another thing I'm putting in here to my beginning spiel is, is how I've, I got some negative comments recently and, I, and it's because some people don't seem to understand what I'm trying to say. They haven't con come to a place um, 
where they've been able to get out of the victim mentality. So I just decided to try to put this, just put this in the beginning that I'm, I am a, a twin flame reader. Okay. Some people don't believe in twin flames. Some people don't believe in, in this divine union type thing. You don't have to, you don't have to believe in twin flame. You don't have to be in a divine union. Um, really, I think what's most helpful, what I'm most helpful is for people who are consciously on um, a path to evolve, walking with spirit, learning with spirit, um, healing old patterns that don't serve them anymore, working every day to become more happy, to become more loving, to basically become a better and better and better person. And it, it really helps a big deal um, uh, to, to take responsibility for the energies that are in your life, okay? To not be in that victim mentality, to, to look at your life and say, okay, how did I get this into my life? So unless you um, have gotten to that place where you're, you're leaving this victim mentality behind, I, I'm not sure if I'm the reader for you, However, with that being said, you know, everybody is welcome, um, whether you agree or not, okay? I just wanted to say that this is basically who I am and what I'm trying to teach here. And if it doesn't resonate, you're, you're not, you don't, I, I'm not necessarily the reader for you then, I guess. So, and anyway, that said, everybody's welcome. I love everybody. I just, um, I just wanted to try and clarify that, how I read and, and what I'm about. So with that said, as a reader, I read minor arcana cards as messages about our very powerful free will. I read major arcana cards as messages about our divine blueprint. Now, there, this is the plan that we wrote for our own lives as our higher self. We have a higher self. And our higher self writes out these divine blueprints for our lifetime so that we encounter and hopefully learn certain poignant um, lessons of life. That when we learn that lesson, it, uh, we raise the vibration and the wisdom that is encoded in our soul. So um, if we can manage to rise in vibration lifetime after lifetime or even significantly during one such as this lifetime we may become what is called enlightened like buddha like jesus isis and toth and many others that we know affected a great deal of positive change for humanity and for our earth so when i'm looking at your major arcana cards it is a lot like um looking at your destiny but it is not exactly because of our very powerful free will okay so um there are times when things happen in our life that we have no control of. We do write them that way. Those times are uh, indicated to me by the Wheel of Fortune card or an unusually large number of major arcana cards in your spread. You have neither. Okay, so let's finally get started here. All right, everyone. So what's going on here? <clears throat> okay. All right, so you're bored. Okay. This is the Four of Cups. This is boredom. This is apathy. This is when um, your life is pretty comfortable and everything is going so well that you, you start to get bored with it. You're like, uh, right? This is boring. Let's do something fun. Let's do some, something exciting. Now, the, the thing that you want to do, though, when you get when you hit this type of energy is to just remind yourself of all the wonderful things that you have. Like, wow, isn't this awesome? I'm so grateful for the fact that my life is so good right now that I'm actually kind of bored, right? Because this has this whole element here of not seeing this blessing from the divine. There's a whole other cup, because these are the cups, that the, the, the divine is trying to give this snail. Oh, you know what I just noticed about this card too? This is a snail. This is a living snail. And then this is like a fossilized um, snail-like creature. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so this is when you don't see the blessings of the universe. Basically, you're like, bo I'm bored of everything. Um, you know, but the blessing is that your life is good. 
Now, the next card that you have, which is the, the card that crosses or affects this energy of this energy, is the Hierophant. Okay, so there may be some sort of change going on because he is a five. Five is the number of change. Look at how, I feel like he's waving hello. But he's got two of these feathers down, which is like this. This is the, that's, you know, you see Jesus doing that. Instead of this, when people think this is the peace symbol, this is not being together. This is being together. But anyway, so this is, this is the Hierophant. Now he can represent a lot of stuff. Okay. You're bored with whatever this is to you. This can be a marriage. This can be a job. This can be your religion. Okay. This can be um, big business. Okay. This can be um, a high priest. Okay. Sometimes the Hierophant is called the high priest. So this is like a cleric or somebody like who is a teacher. Okay. You're bored. You're bored because this is the root of what's up. And what we have here is the sun in reverse. This is the root of what is at the heart. Okay. This is now, first of all, I always say, always, whenever you get the sun card in a reading, whether it's in the reverse or not, this is a blessing. This is happiness. This is success. This is the happiest card in the deck. So this is, this represents the happiest a person can be. In fact, I don't even remember ever seeing this sun card come out from this deck yet. I'm just like, wow, look at that sun card. That's awesome. And I just realized that I didn't, I haven't even seen it yet. So Scorpio, you're like the first person, the first sign rather, to get this card from this deck. And the, now this landline that we have here just rang. So that is a confirmation. Now, some people will read the sun in the reverse as unhappiness, but I don't. I see it as a magical card because first of all, it, what it does is it makes all of anything that seems negative in this read, it makes it not as bad as it could be. Okay, that's part of the magic of this card. So that's why I don't read it as unhappiness when it's in the reverse. So what is going on here is because, I mean, look at this. This is luxury. Okay, this is, things are pretty good, but you're bored. You're happy but not as happy as you could be. So these two here, basically this, they say the same thing. The reason you're feeling bored and lethargic is because you're not as happy as you could be. And this is the energy that you're bored with, I think. All right, let's see what else we have here. Okay, so this is um, your recent past, and it's moving out of your life at this time. Okay, so this happened in the past. Now, the two of pentacles, this is, um, oh, so the, the cups is your energy along with Pisces and Cancer, you guys, just so that you know. And then we went through a couple of major arcana cards, and now we have the suit of coins. So this is Earth. This is um, a Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus energy. This is when this indicates balance. This indicates going back and forth or waffling between some sort of decision. This could be juggling your money. When it is in the reverse, you are no longer ju juggling. Okay? When it is in the reverse, you are um, basically. Uh, just a moment, please. Okay, so, sorry about that. Somebody poked their head in here. Like I was saying, okay, so this is you not juggling anymore because this is this usually has to do um, with your money. So money usually has to do with your work or your responsibility. So when it's in the reverse, you kind of kind of drop these pentacles where you're just like you you don't um, you lessen what you're responsible for doing. You you may have broken free from. A partnership is two people, right? When, when you have the two of cups, that can be a partnership. Well, so can this as well. But when it's in the reverse, it can mean a broken partnership. Okay? This is also, this in the Rider Waite deck, this also talks about pretending to be happy. 
So what I'm getting from this is um, there is a partnership that you're bored with. You know you're not as happy as you could be. You're sick of it. You're going to break free of it. Now, the next two cards for me as a reader are future cards. So let's just grab this sucker first. Sucker? The hell did that come from? Uh, oh, this is the King of Wands. Okay, so King. Kings and Queens, boss energy, right? Wands is fire. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Do you have any air energy in here yet? Because I just feel kind of out of breath. Nope. There is no air energy here, okay? Um, I haven't been paying attention to that recently, but I, that was really pointed out to me here pretty, pretty starkly. You know, this Hierophant is earth energy, the tower is fire, uh, the sun is fire. Yeah, there is no air energy here. So, um, that air energy is your intellect. Okay, so you may want to put a little more of your intellect into this, um, this situation here. Let's see how that plays out here. Um, the King of Wands, okay, so this is a, a masculine energy, which could be a woman. It doesn't have to be a man. It doesn't have to be a fire sign. This person is a go-getter. This person talks a lot. This person has all the energy in the world. This person doesn't stop. That's why they're a king. Okay, man or woman. This, um, this person knows how to get what they want. They're hard workers. They put a lot of effort into whatever, they, uh, whatever their goal is. I don't know what kind of bird this is, but I just heard horse. Horus, H-O-R-U-S. That is the son of Isis and Osiris. He's a wasn't he a sun god like Ra? Hmm, that's definitely some fiery um, energy going on here. You might want to go ahead and look up Horus. I don't know but enough about him actually. I'm, um, well, I do. I do know about Horus. But none of it is what I need to relate to you. Okay, so this is, this could be a person, but you know what, this could also be uh, your job. This could be your boss, because wands are awesome, awesome. <laughs> wands are often, um, it, it's associated with work. Uh, the old days, um, the wands, they, in, in the old tarot, they used to be called the working class. You know, there's, I don't believe in classes of people, you know. But these would be the workers, you know, and then the pentacles would be like all the lords and the ladies, all the people who had all the money, the merchants, stuff like that, the kings and queens. And then um, the swords would be like the knights, people in authority, you know, like police and all that stuff, too. And um, water is, you know, like the church, spirit, um, the uh, you know, wizards even, you know, clerics and stuff like that. So... This has to do with work. This could be um, a person, but you know, this could be your job as well. Like I'm in. But there's the tower moment coming. Yep. There are, now, it, what's interesting about this tower here is this it's a tree. And it sure as heck looks like a wand, doesn't it? This is reminding me of the burning times. I had um, a dream recently. Well, actually, it was last year that um, I believe that I was probably burned at the stake. And because what I learned from that dream was that they didn't always tie somebody to a stake. I mean, stakes can be kind of hard to make. Sometimes they just tied you to a tree and set you on fire. I'm sorry about that, but that's, there's something in that for you guys. Maybe that happened to you, but 
what's going on here is there's going to be a tower moment. This is a sudden change. Now, hopefully, you're that that terrible being burnt at the stake type of deal isn't going to happen to you, but um, it, it could be that. Hang on. Too much fire, too much temper. Something's going to give. Now, the tower moment, you see the lightning? The lightning hits the crown chakra. So this could be an epiphany, but it will change everything. And it does kind of look like there's some water down here. So maybe your intuition does know this is coming. If, especially if you're sick of your job, it could be that finally, maybe, maybe your boss or this king of wands or somebody um, says something to you. They're not in the reverse. If they were in the reverse, I would say this person is going to say some, they're going to burn you somehow, but they're not. This is somebody who is very active. Um, but something's going to change here. And it has to do with fire. I think that you're going to maybe just kind of realize something. Yeah, it, it, this is starting to look like this. This is like a love relationship or your job. This is your marriage or this is your job. Now, what we've got here at your, this is your hope. This is the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups is nostalgia. I think that... Now, the Six of Cups can be things like um, children. Maybe you were... Maybe you grew up with this King of Wands, this person. Um... Maybe you had a past life with them, because this is about the past. When it's in the upright, it's about the future. But this is about the past. This is about the good old days. This is about children. So you may be hoping for more good old days coming. You may be hoping to recreate something from your good old days. Uh, that never came to me before. That just came to me for this this card you may be hoping to have children maybe if you are in um, a marriage right now and there's no children involved for some reason you know that could be part of it but uh, you know it could be that you grew up with Whoever this person is, I, I think the hierophant represents an idea, like a um, not not a person, like a marriage, like a job, like a religion, maybe even. Um, but I think I've, I'm feeling like a love partnership, like a marriage or a job, mostly. But like I'm saying, you know, this so this is basically the person, the one. This is a people card. Maybe you grew up with this person. Maybe you have children with them. Or you're hoping to have children with them. Maybe this is someone you've got your eye on for your future. And then you're just like, okay, that's it. I understand now. And I'm out of here. Let's see. This is your, oh, here. Okay, so you, here you are. You've come into your own reading, but in the reverse, Scorpio. You, this is your card. You are the Queen of Cups, okay? But you're in the reverse, so you're feeling pretty insecure right now, okay? Um, you may be feeling kind of cranky. You may be feeling um, pretty upset about something here. But mostly what I'm feeling is insecurity. Maybe you're hoping to feel as good as you did when you were a child, when maybe you had more um, 
security as a child. Maybe you're feeling like this is really hard. Things were easier when I was a child. I, I, I can't handle this. Um, I, you know, if you're a young adult, if you're just getting started, you know what I mean? But you're feeling insecure. So the next card that we have here is your fear card. Okay, so this, this to me is related to this king. Okay, now, like I said, this king of, of, um, of wands here. Now, the page of wands reports to the king or the queen. And so when I have these two, like if I, if I have a king or queen and the page of the same suit, these are definitely talking to each other. Okay. So this page of wands could be a child in your life uh, who is a fire sign, but it doesn't, I don't know. Uh, this is a messenger as well. Now this is a loyal friend when they're right side up. So I would say that um, in the reverse, this is a not a loyal friend. This is a childlike happy person this is a childish person. So this is the energy that you've got in your fear section here. Somebody who's opinionated, full of demands, headstrong, childish. Um, and so as a messenger, this page would bring bad news. Okay. So I think what you were afraid of is getting bad news about this king of wands. This could be a new job. Okay. However, this isn't in the reverse. This is right side up. But you do have that tower there. Because there, there is, uh, there's some sadness that's coming. This is the crying over spilled milk card. So it looks like maybe you're trying to get a new, I don't know, you're, you're trying to do something different here. You're bored. You're not as happy as you could be. You're hoping to be as happy as, as you were, to feel as secure as you were when you were a child. You're afraid of getting bad news. Um, you know, this, these are vultures, and this is something else here, but I don't know. I just feel this similarity here. This tower is shocking news. This could be what, what something could be ending that you aren't necessarily ready for because this is sudden. This is shocking. This is an ending. This is a, a breakdown of something in a big, fat, honking way. And like I said, there was water in here, and this is a cup of water, your energy. This is the five. This is a number of change. This is change. So I think that this tower moment may not, you may lose something, some, some kind of idea. You, you may have thought something was going to be cool, but it's not. You're not prepared for this change that's coming. The underlying energy to this entire read is the Ten of Pentacles. This is the family you come from, the family you receive your DNA and or money from or and or DNA from. Not everybody who gets their DNA from their the family. They, some people are adopted. This may also have something to do with fall because every time I see this card, I see the pumpkins and the corn. This is a harvest because this isn't just the family you come from. This can also represent an inheritance. It can represent a happy ending. It's a 10. All 10s are, are endings. So you want a happy family life. This is the underlying energy of this whole read. You just want a family life that has a, an abundance, okay? You may feel like you're 
lacking. This is mourning energy. I don't have your card as the death card here, so I don't feel this is going to be a physical death of anyone. But this is mourning some sort of loss. And, you know, oh, this I heard you want it all, which isn't a bad thing to want. You want the family, you want the money, you want the children, you want the happy home. Yeah. You want love, you want a true partnership, uh, true love. Yeah, so that you can stop with all this conflict that's going on in your mind. Let's go ahead and get your oracle cards and we'll close out your reading. Please don't forget to like. That really helps me out. So to subscribing, I think YouTube unsubscribes people who haven't been to certain channels in a while. And I don't agree with that. I think that is very annoying. Um, if I haven't been to a channel in a while, I wouldn't want YouTube to just decide to unsubscribe me. It was my decision to subscribe. But anyway, um, you might want to check to see if you're still subscribed. All right, everybody. There goes one. Whoop, there's some more. Is that it? Should I go again? No. All right, what do we got? Harmony and the dream. Oh, okay, let's start with this one. Harmony, power, self-confidence, and productivity. Okay, so self-confidence. Yeah, you're insecure. You're insecure, sweetie. Why? Why are you insecure? Because this is what you are. The Queen of Cups is beautiful. They are psychic. They are sweet. Everybody loves them. Look at how this is an orange and, and orange blossoms, which is so fragrant, so beautiful, so productive. Look, this is the bee. Bees are busy. Bees are productive. It looks like this is growing out of honey. So what we have here, uh, harmony too, a uh, land of milk and honey. So you are powerful. You're a queen. Self-confidence, you're a queen. Productivity, you're a queen bee. Spirit would not have given you your card as a queen, man or woman too, by the way, okay? The king of cups is just a different personality type, but kings and queens to me on this channel, they are not gender uh, specific. This is energy. Okay, um, and you, and if you're a man, you don't have to be effeminate for this either. You, you just this is just you know you're psychic, you're kind, you are attractive, everybody loves you. Okay, and you're also the kind of person where sometimes people will see themselves reflected in you because you're water. If they go Scorpio is beautiful or handsome, Scorpio is so cool. That's what you that's what they are. But if they look at you and they say Scorpio is stuck up and and mean and blah blah blah, you know, that's what they are. But what you actually are is wonderful. Everybody loves you. You are hella psychic. Okay? So you're a queen. You are royalty. You are a queen bee. There is no reason for you to be insecure, love. No reason at all. Life just has challenges, you know? Okay, so the next one is the dream. Something is revealed, insight and breakthrough. So, okay, so this tower is really, thank you for clarifying, Gaia. This tower moment is a realization, and it has something to do with a dream. It may have been a, a dream that you had while you were asleep, but it may have to do with a dream that you have. 
for your life. Something is going to be revealed, an insight. Like I said, this could be an epiphany. Um, that Those things just come to you. That's what an insight is. And it says breakthrough, breakthrough. Now, this may not feel so good at first, Scorpio. But what it's really doing is it's, it's breaking down that which you don't need anymore. A breakthrough frees you from whatever you were thinking, okay? You know, it could be, very well be, say it's a job. Oh my God, I can't work here anymore. I, I like you know, it was great here for a while. They felt like family. But yeah, they felt like family. But I got to get a new job. Shit. Could be as simple as that. Oh, man, I was having fun, but I need a new job. Uh-oh. So... You know, and you know, if, if this is love or a marriage, of course you're going to feel this way. Of course. Now let's see what we can get from the Heart and Mind Oracle deck by April Mangino. I love these cards because they're so flexible and they are, they're like really well laminated. They're a lot like another Earth deck that I have that is really well made. Um, I love this deep purple color. I love this design, the energy to it. But what I really love is they're so wide that, like, it, they, you know, it can be a little difficult for my hand to hold, but they're so flexible that I can totally shuffle them. However, if I don't want to extend my hand like that, I can shuffle them like this too, which is what I've been doing. If you, uh, I feel very uh, fortunate to be, what I, I think, the, the only tarot reader on YouTube to have this deck. So if you would like to purchase this deck, I do have the link for it in the description box below. It's a great way to support a great feminine. Alrighty. Sometimes I gotta get a little crazy there with the shuffling or nothing comes out. Focus, 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 focus. <laughs> that ain't just a flower. Do you see that? Yeah, there's a dragonfly or something there. I don't see any wings, so maybe it's a baby dragonfly, but there is definitely a bug there. See, you gotta focus. What a beautiful picture. Eh. All right, focus. Okie dokie. So the message for the oracle is choose your target. Center your attention on what you are seeking to accomplish. The guidance is is. Wait, the guidance here is to hone in on a key aspect of your life and utilize that to concentrate your energy. Choose your target. Center your attention on what you're seeking to accomplish. The guidance here is to hone in on a key aspect of your life and utilize that to concentrate your energy. Key aspect of your life. What you're hoping for here, concentrate on what you're hoping for, this happiness. Maybe you grew up in a happy home, and that's what you want to have in this marriage that you don't have. Focus. That's what I want. Okay? You can't go back to the past, but if you've got a good example from your past, you can do that. These are grasshoppers, and this is a dragonfly, but I felt a similarity. So it's going to be not the same as you're hoping for, but it will be very similar. See how this bug is on a flower, and these are on the flowers too? Spirit is starting to show me these 
types of similarities so that I can show you how these go together. But since this is your hope, and this is talking about what you want, this is something from your past. This could be a past life, but this is also from your childhood. There was something about your childhood that you, you kind of want to recreate or to have in your life as your own. So, yeah, these cards addressed everything. Something that Something's coming, you know, you may mourn for it for a while, Scorpio, but it's really, I feel like it's going to be best. It's best for you. And who knows, I mean, this King of Wands may be the attitude that you need. This is a go-getter. This is somebody who is very focused. Somebody who has all the energy it takes to get what he wants. This is focus right here. Unless it's, you know, there's pentacles too. The Knight of Pentacles, the King and Queen of Pentacles, they're very focused as well. But I'm saying... This fire energy, there's a lot of fire here. Fire is energy itself. It's also spirit. I feel like they're saying, get fired up about what you want. Get fired up about it. Get focused on it. And you can have it. You can create it. Uh, you can create whatever you want in your life. You, and remember, you've got the sun card. So even though we've got this tower moment here, even though we've got this crying over spilled milk going on over here, even though we've got this uh, feeling insecure inside here, it ain't as bad as it could be, darling. Mm -mm. You're going to fly. You need confidence. Solar plexus energy is confidence. She, she or he is holding what I think is a citrine. Maybe you want to start carrying around a natural citrine in your pocket. Be careful. Sometimes people heat up amethyst and make it a citrine. That's not a real citrine. Go get a real citrine and put it in your pocket. And I want to say, and save it for a rainy day. <laughs> I want to sing it. But confidence. Um, solar, ple solar plexus. Okay, do some solar plexus work. Listen to uh, solar plexus chakra binaural beats. Uh, focus, st spend some time outside. Focus on your, your solar plexus chakra. Focus on, on being confident as well. You're going to get there, Scorpio. You've got the sun card. You're going to be happy. You just have to um, create what you want. That's also fire energy. All right, Scorpio, let's see how much control you have over this situation. I can gauge that by the number of major arcana to minor. And you've got one, oh, two, three. Wait, nope, one and two, right, and three. Okay, three out of 10 cards. That means you have most of the control. And where you do have the major arcana cards, this is what you wrote into your divine blueprint. Okay, so this is a major part of your divine blueprint. This tower moment is huge for you, okay? And this sun here is huge. It's telling you, work on your solar plexus, work on your confidence, because that is going to help you achieve this happiness. Because when people are confident, they're pretty freaking happy. And that's another, look at these sunflowers, okay? There you go. Harvest time. These are daffodils, yeah. But this is, this is harvest time. See all this yellow? This is what you want. And it comes from confidence. All right, that's what I have for you at this time, Scorpio. I hope you enjoyed your reading. See you next time.